Hi, I am Matteo Spinelli and this is what we are going to build today. It is a hand-wired keyboard um, built inside a 3D printed case. The first thing to do is to uh, put the switches into the switch plate. Uh, don't force the switches into the hole. If it is too tight, you need to file a little plastic until the switch fits perfectly. Put all the switches into uh, the same uh, orientation with the pins facing up. Uh, I would also check that the uh, stabilizers are actually working because it will be uh, harder later on to fix them. We need five pieces of wire to cover the keyboard rows and here I'm using a 0.6 millimeters gouge uh, wire and to make things easier later I'm, re I'm also removing the insulation with a sharp knife. Bend the diodes like this, uh, but be careful that diodes have a polarity. Current flows only in one direction. You will notice that one of the terminals is marked with a black line. That is the cathode. This time we are bending the opposite side. Finally, soldering time. Take your wire solder and soldering iron and Put a tiny bit of solder on each switch pin. We are concentrating on the left one at this point. Please bear with me as I'm terrible with the soldering iron. Uh, check YouTube for a tutorial from more experienced people, but the good news is that if it works for me, anyone can do it. You need just a little quantity of solder on the pin. If you put too much, like I did here, just remove it and start over. Now we are soldering the diodes. Uh, remember, we are always soldering to the left pin of the switch and the cathode is always facing down. Let me stress on this because it is a very common mistake. Uh, the cathode is always marked on the diode with a black line. So the line must be always facing down. Now we need to connect all the diodes together and to do so, I'm threading the wire that we previously peeled through all the leads of the diodes. You can probably see that the wire goes under one diode and above the other. Uh, this will help us later with the soldering. Another option is to bend the second lead of the diode and connect it to the one to its right. Um, this way we do not need an additional wire uh, to connect all the diodes and it is probably easier uh, to do this way but anyway for this project I wanted to try something different as always put as little solder as you can take your time it will be a long process but it will be well worth it Now we can remove all the excess wire and doing so also double check that all the solder points are solid. Here I missed one so I'm going to solder it again. 
proceed with all the other rows in the same way and when you reach the last row just um, bend the diodes in a U shape so they fit the case. Now I am insulating the wires that I just soldered with some tape. Here I'm using a heat resistant tape that uh, happened to be exactly of the right size, but you can also use electrical tape or anything that can uh, electrically insulate our uh, wires. We need more wires to connect the columns. As we did for the rows, we are removing the insulation here too. Since soldering the wire to the first switch is going to be tricky, I'm scraping the tip of the wire with a hobby knife and then add some uh, solder to it. You know the drill by now, add a tiny bit of solder to the right pin of the switch and start soldering the column wire. Uh, solder the first switch and then bend the wire across the other uh, switches. Be careful not to short the columns and the rows. Here I'm um, removing the excess wire and double checking that the wire is not touching uh, the diode. And it's finally time to connect everything to the controller. I'm using a rainbow ribbon cable. It is easier this way to follow each wire from the switch to the controller. Peel the wire, add a little solder and then solder to the switch. Easy peasy. I'm soldering four columns at a time. If you want things a little tidier, you can keep all the wires together and go straight from the switch to the controller. Now on the controller side, we need to connect the 16 columns and 5 rows to the controller. The first and the last pins on the TNC won't be accessible once the controller is in its final position, so I'm soldering them now, then flip the controller, insert it into the, the case top side and um, proceed with the other connections. The keyboard is designed for a TIN C3 and you can actually use uh, any available pin on the controller. Just be careful to avoid the pins marked with uh, an X. If you want to follow my example, uh, I connected the rows to the blue pins and the columns to the green pins. Just be careful to avoid pin number 13 that it is shared with an onboard LED and they told me it is not a good idea to use that. 
if all went well, you should end up with something like this and hopefully better. Believe it or not, the keyboard is ready. Double check all the connections, flip the keyboard over and we are ready to add the stabilizers and the keycaps. Regarding the stabilizers, we are using coaster. And unfortunately, there are many kind of coaster stabilizers and this is a source of frustration. You have to check that the stabilizer moves freely on its wire. It is very important to have a smooth key press. Here, the black one is perfect while the white one is too tight on the wire and doesn't move freely. If you end up with one of those stabilizers, you should uh, sand the stabilizer a little or maybe even the, the wire with some fine sandpaper uh, until the stabilizer moves freely on the wire. And since we are at it, I am also adding some lubricant so the stabilizer will be velvet smooth. When you are inserting the stabilizer into the switch plate, be careful that it is not too tight. And if it is too tight, the two arms of the stabilizers might bend, and if they bend, they create some friction on the stabilizer part that goes into the keycap. That friction makes the key press feel mushy, and we don't want that, of course. I realized that uh, Hakko switches are not 100% compatible with uh, Cherry switches and I actually had to uh, dremel a small portion of plastic from the sides but once I've done that they are perfect. All left to do is to close the keyboard and hope that everything is working. Since the bottom plate is holding the controller, slide the, the plate from the bottom and be sure that the hook inside catches the controller. Congratulations, you just finished your hand-wired 3D printed mechanical keyboard. All left to do is to program the firmware and that requires a tutorial of its own. So, see you next time.